What is up, everybody? So I have a very interesting story for you all today. President Trump decided not to label Mexican drug cartels as terrorist organizations. One of the reasons why he probably did that was because of the Mexican government not wanting President Trump to do so. There's a lot of implications with this, especially it has to do with the United States using the term terrorism as a reason to invade other countries and potentially being in a war with Mexico. Before I get into that though, I wanna let you guys know that I actually study extremism and I study terrorism. And so it's a kind of a larger part of my pursuit to trying to get a PhD um, studying diplomacy and international relations. The way that's relevant to you guys is that I'm going off of like historical context of when has this been a problem? How have we handled it? When is this being terrorism a problem? How do we handle it after we labeled groups as, or countries as like, rogue terrorist states supporting terrorism or just a terrorist organization in general. So anyway, that's kind of like my background. So if you guys want to check out the whole article of what I'm talking about, you can feel free and go into the, the description box below, but I'm just pretty much just spitballing what I know on the situation. Okay. Now let's do a real quick background of what exactly we do when we label a group or a country as terrorist or terrorist supporting. Let's actually go all the way back to the axis of evil in 2001 with President George W. Bush. Now, the axis of evil, for those of you who do not know, the axis of evil is pretty much where President Bush said, hey, if you guys aren't with us, you're against us. You're either with us or supporting the terrorists. Well, let's run down some of those countries and how that ended up. So there's Libya, which we overthrew their government. There's Cuba, which we tried to overthrow. There's Iraq, which we did overthrow. There's Iran, which we're trying to overthrow, and there's Syria, which we are currently in. Doesn't look too well, does it? The Mexican government said in the past, they don't want the United States labeling their groups as terrorist organizations. They don't want that term. What does that do for Mexico domestically? That's the question I don't think is going to be talked about. Well, I mean, look at what happened when they had, uh, they tried to capture El Chapo's son. Didn't really work out, did it? Literally, Mexico for a couple of days just went up in flames. That's essentially the gist of the story. Imagine what it would be like if the United States invaded and the Mexican government either had to support the United States or would literally be overthrown by the United States. Imagine what kind of chaos would ensue then. Probably a big problem, right? I would assume so. The question also that we have is, what exactly does this do for peace and stability? Labeling a group as terrorist organizations. Well, generally, when we label a group as a terrorist organization, we put them in a file of where and when they operate and how are we going to utilize counterterrorism. Generally speaking with those types of things, it, our strategy only comes in two forms, generally speaking. Well, three, sanctions or revoking aid from that country, drone strikes. Again, I'm just spitballing some options here. These are the general options that I've seen. Drone strikes. Well, I'm gonna go back to that actually. The third is occupying, cutting off aid. Well, we did that with Iraq and it killed large amounts of civilians back in the 90s. I, I believe it was around the 90s we killed, I think it was 500,000 kids. So you can imagine what that, what that would look like if we were to cut off aid to say Mexico. Next, we have drone strikes. Well, the thing about drone strikes is the fact that we have a 90% civilian death casualty rate with drone strikes. That was literally leaked under the Obama administration. In addition to this, as a fun little like side rant, there's actually a group in a place called Swat Valley. It was pretty much 80% of the Taliban is comprised of Pashtuns, which live in the Swat Valley, which is in between Pakistan and Afghanistan. They go by a um, honor system or a tribal code called Pashtun Wali, where essentially if you kill one of their family members, the rest of the family will go against you. So if the average family has seven kids, which generally it does, you kill one of them, then you have that whole group against you. You kill two people, you probably have two families against you. You kill three people, you have three families against you. You can imagine how fast that racks up. If we were to do something similar in Mexico, could you imagine, even though they don't go by passion and Wally, Wally culture, could you imagine how many people we would have going against us? Now you might think, well, eventually there's not gonna be enough people to shoot left because there's terrorists. Well, Unless you plan on taking out the entire population, that's probably not gonna work. You're going to increase the radicalization and increase the recruitment, which goes to number three, which is occupation. 
statistically with occupation, that never actually works. That's the thing. And it's not just with the United States, it's globally. For example, with Ethiopia, they tried to occupy Somalia. And as a result of that, the locals in that area, they actually joined Al-Shabaab, which is an Islamist extremist organization. And then they started uh, incorporating suicide bombers. That also happens with the Taliban. You might be thinking real quick, well, hold on a second, that's Islamist extremism. That's not the same as everything else that we're dealing with. Well, no, not really, actually, because there's even secular groups too, like the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka. The point here is that, generally speaking, when a country is occupying another country, it never works out, ever. Like, well, for the most part, it doesn't ever work out because you increase radicalization and you increase resentment. The groups that were originally fighting, in this case, the drug cartels in Mexico would likely unite against the United States. The other point I wanted to mention is when was the last time we had a war on the Western Hemisphere? That was the Civil War, the 1800s. Granted, there's a little bit of stuff, I believe, in the Spanish-American War, and then you have the war with Mexico. That was all in the 1800s. That was the last time we had a war on the Western Hemisphere. Just as a really quick thought, could you imagine if we had a, an Iraq or a Syria situation, but in Mexico? The question that we would have to then ask ourselves is how long would we want to stay in Mexico? Are we thinking about staying there for 20 years, for 30 years, for 40 years in order to try to alleviate this, the, uh, the conflict in that area, mitigate the damage? Another thought is what happens with all those refugees? Like we already have an immigration problem. What happens when those people gain refugee status? Because that changes the whole game up. Our laws and regulations regarding refugees is a little bit different than immigration. My point is this. By labeling a group as a terrorist organization, we are directly changing the United States' policy in addressing that situation. By Mexico saying, no, don't label our groups as terrorist groups, they're playing a really smart game because they're taking away the justification for the United States to be able to go inside their country because we are still at a war on terrorism. So instead of looking at this issue as, why don't you consider them terrorists? They're terrorizing the citizens. Well, number one, there's seven different definitions of terrorism. Each different department inside the United States has a different definition of terrorism. Fun fact. Now, obviously we all agree that this is a bad situation. Nobody agrees with the cartels, but there are different things that we would be able to do in order to address this situation, like reforming our own drug policy, decriminalizing certain drugs, legalizing some other drugs like marijuana. My point with all this, is that we should thank Mexico for making sure the United States did not, in fact, label their groups as terrorist organizations because they probably just saved us another war because they took away our justification. That is what I'm trying to prove here.